In this episode, I'm going to show you how to create a grid of objects. So how to repeat some object many times in columns and rows. So first, let's try to make several objects in one row. We know how to use the while loop. So I'm going to use while to repeat some object. I'm going to need a variable. And we will start on the left border. We will use this loop while x is less than the width of the screen. So we have to remember to now increase x, otherwise we'll stay in this loop forever. So I'm going to say x equals x plus 40, for example. And I'm going to increase the size of our window. OK, there we have it. Now we should draw something, otherwise this loop is not very useful. So I'm going to draw a rectangle on our X position. I will draw it on the top of the screen and I will use a size of 20 for now. So let's run this program and here are our rectangles. So I'm going to do some more changes. I'm going to remove the border as usually and change the background color. I will just type some random number here and see what we get. Okay, it's a blue, very bright blue. Now, what happens when we increase this? This is the width and the height of our rectangles, so we have the same amount of rectangles, but they are larger, there's less space between them. So now, how could I have many rows of rectangles? The easiest, of course, would be just to copy and paste. I just change here the vertical position, so I put it lower, like at 40. And now I run this, but I still get the same one. Why is this happening? Even I changed here my y value. When I get out of this loop, x is already out of the screen. We, I have been increasing x from, the, from 0 up up using this. 40 pixels each time until I got out of the screen and here when I try to enter this loop x is already higher than width it's equal or higher so it just skips these lines so to fix this I just have to type here x equals 0 again so I'm resetting the x you can imagine here you can see x is increasing from 0, 40, 80 and in the next line is the same again, 0, 40, 80, etc. But that's not a very practical way to copy and paste lots of lines, so we just have to do a while loop inside a while loop. Okay, that sounds a bit complicated, but it's just the same structure we used here. So we just have to introduce a while loop inside this while loop. And I just copy here another while, and I'm going to do something inside it. I can keep those lines inside the while loop and the while loop will check a variable called y if this y variable is less than the height. So we know if, if that's the variable I'm checking, I should increase that variable inside this loop. And I will draw my rectangle on this y position now. So at the beginning, y is not declared. I have to declare my variable y equals 0. And what's missing here? I have to increase also my x variable inside this loop. So I will type here x equals x plus 40. Let me explain you how this is working now. We start here with x equal being to 0. This is the left border of the screen. And we're going to run this loop while x is less than the width of the screen. So now I start something else here. Now that I'm inside this loop, I say the, my y value, that's 0. So I'm up the top of the screen. And I run into this loop saying, is y less than the height? It is. So I just draw a rectangle. This will be on the top left corner of the screen. And now I increase y. I go down 40 pixels and I jump back here, I check again, is y still less than height? 
and it will be when it's 0 and 40 and 80, 120. So I'm drawing rectangles down until I reach the bottom of the screen. At that point, I move x 40 pixels to the right. So I'm going to start now drawing the second column. And I reach here, I jump back to my condition. It's checking, is x still less than the width of the screen? And it will be only 40, because before it was 0, I increased it here, now it's 40. And now I can start drawing down from top to bottom. The y will be 0, then 40, 80. So I draw the second column at, until it reaches the bottom of the screen. And then again, I increase x to the next column. So now if I increase these, the size of the rectangles, then I will have less space between them. We'll try with 38, then I have these very thin lines. Now I could also achieve this image just by having a white background and drawing blue lines. What's happening here is I'm, ha I'm having a blue background and I'm drawing a lot of white rectangles. But if I now randomly change the color of the of each rectangle using fill and a random call random maybe between 100 and 150 then this effect I couldn't achieve just by having a flat background because now each rectangle has a different color now if I want to have brighter rectangles I could type here between 200 and 250 so now they are all quite white. If I want a greater variety, like I want black rectangles and white and everything in between, then I can type between 0 and 255. If I just want dark rectangles, then I can, I can type these values like between 0 and 55. So now I could easily convert these rectangles into circles. I just have to change here rect by ellipse. I could just leave it like this. Then what's not so nice is that the first circle is centered on the corner. So I would like to push it 20 pixels down and right. So I remove the space here and, and bring all the circles in. So I just have to add here x plus 20 and y plus 20. So now I'm moving each circle, each ellipse down 20 pixels and right 20 pixels. So now you can see it. Now, how could I have less circles or more circles? How can I control the amount? Well, I can see here the size of my screen is 400 times 400. And I'm increasing each time 40 pixels. So then you can fit, I guess, 10. If you divide 400 by 40, you get 10. If I would move faster, let's say if I increase each time 60 for example then they will be more separated and i will reach the total amount faster if i would like to have more circles i could just increase 20 and then i'm gonna have a lot of them but now the funny thing is they are overlapping because they are too big for this amount of circles if i want to avoid that they are overlapping then i should decrease the size but it's also a nice effect when they are overlapping. You don't have to have the same size for the width and the height, or you don't have to increase at the same speed, x and y. If I would increase x faster, then what will happen? Then I will have less columns, but I, have, I will have the same amount of rows. If I even make this smaller, I'm just going very slowly down. I'm just increasing 10 pixels each time so that now I have a lot of circles stacked vertically and only a few horizontally. Just to add a last funny effect, we could uh, make that some random circles will be red, but very few. So we know that we can control this by using an if statement. We can say if random of 100 is greater than 96, then in that case, use a fill color of red. 255.00 is red. Remember, this is red component, green component, and blue component. 
and else it will pick up one of those gray colors. So you can see now that the few random circles are red. Depending on this value here, as we have seen in another episode, we can make the, the frequency just much higher. Now it's a lot of red. Or if I would make 98, for example, there's now just going to be a couple, like look one. And it's going to be always. Now look at the same program. Now we got six, it looks like. So in this episode, we have seen how to create a while loop inside a while loop to have rows and columns of objects. So to we can create something like a chess table or windows in a building or these strange repeating patterns.